Hey there, War Gamers, Justin Aaron Painter here, and you guys are tuned in for this month's painting tutorial. So, based on a recommendation from one of the guys from our Twitch community, which would be uh, Nomadic Chris from Twitchland, thank you very much, man. Uh, he has recommended that uh, this month I try and do my painting tutorial a little bit different. He thought it might be cool if I break it up into segments. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but today we're going to be working on part one of this month's painting tutorial. And what are we going to be painting? What are we going to be working on, you ask? This guy. I picked up my fist on when he came out, and uh, this is going to be uh, this month's challenge for me to complete and try and kind of show you guys my process, teach you some things along the way, but also complete this for one of our patrons, which would be for Wheels uh, from Twitchland or Chris Oaks, if you know him from Facebook. Uh, he's my number one patron at the War Master level, which is absolutely bananas, but one of the rewards for him is me actually completing a mini. So we're going to be working on Mephiston. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, unbox this and check out the sprue and get to some assembly. Boom! We've got Mephiston. Ready to go. All I gotta do is get this wrapping off. So uh, let's go ahead and get that. And just like that, he is out of the package. Let's go ahead and check out what we've got here. So yeah, it's some Mephiston instructions. Looks like he might be reasonably easy to put together. Some rules, that's pretty obvious. Uh, I think we're gonna get two options with him um, in terms of customization. I think we're going to have the hand here that we can change and we're gonna have the plasma pistol. I think I think I might like the hand up by his face, almost like he's casting a spell, more so than the pistol. I feel like the hand up's going to uh, give him a, a better pose, because you've got all this flowing down here, and I feel like the hand out is just kind of weird. If you delete that and he's got his hand up, I feel like it, it makes this portion of the, the piece stand out a bit more, and I like that. So I think when we get to assembly, that's how we're going to tackle that. So, and on that note, just like in last month's tutorial, let's go ahead and make that happen. And just like that, we've got all the bits here. We've got them, uh, went ahead and taken off the sprue and cleaned all the bits just a bit. <laughs> cleaned the bits just a bit. Sometimes I make jokes, sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're not. <sighs> this particular model here is pretty awesome though. He's, he's very grandiose in size. Um, I think I think when you look in Premier, sometimes you, you forget the, just how much bigger than Space Marines they are. So looking at this cloak, he looks, looks huge. Like it's gonna be a very, uh, um, daunting model to, to look at on the battlefield. I think the the sword is particularly cool. It's very sweet looking. And one of the other things that I really like from this particular model is the base. I think this is gonna look really cool in a, a beige kind of color. Probably use like a Ushapti bone or something. Um, go ahead and hit that with the beige paint and then wash it and then maybe hit a dry brush with it with perhaps a, uh, a long beard gray maybe or perhaps a Terminatus stone which I can't find here immediately, but uh, actually, hang on, just because I might have it. I do! Terminatus Stone. I think one of those over the, the Ushapti Bone Wash might look pretty good. I'm not sure if I want to wash this with a brown or a unknown oil uh, type thing. It depends on what kind of color I want. I might... Hmm. I could do the stone... Or I could do the stone... I could do the stone gray. And then that actually beige. I didn't realize it actually had uh, the text there, so... That could be interesting. We'll see. We'll see what I come up with when we get to that part. Uh, the other thing I went ahead and did when I was uh, taking these uh, or clipping these off the sprue and doing the, the cleaning is I went ahead and uh, cut the, the sprue itself and left the head on here. Uh, I think I'm going to be able to assemble him in such a way that I can leave the head off so I can get in here and paint his uh, face and his hair very easily uh, without having to worry about hitting the rest of the model. When we get in here and we start doing the assembly, however, uh, he's going to have this flowing cape dealio uh, on his back and I'm going to want uh, parts of this to still be red uh, even though it's not much of it um, and I'm going to want parts of uh, the front robe here to be a uh, red and then this back one to be black so we are going to be doing some masking later which I think is going to be a lot of fun and be something useful to show you guys if you haven't already seen me work with some silly putty but on that note let's go ahead and get these bits and assemble this model all right and just like that we've gone ahead and got the assembly done on Mr. Mephiston here and he is, again, he's looking grandiose and huge, menacing. He is a force to be reckoned with on the table. These these new sculpts are just fantastic. I, I did have a few issues when I was assembling, though. Uh, there's some spots right in here where the uh, cloak didn't quite want to line up, so I'd use a little bit of green stuff to fill a gap there. I'm, I'm thinking once the primer's down, uh, that won't be quite as, you know, not nice looking. 
uh, and then I had to uh, kind of fill in right here on this leg and then another spot down here you can't see so much but I use glue and then scrape and try and fill the gap um, uh, same right in here you can kind of see a little bit um, I did the best that I could. I don't think it's going to be noticeable once it's primed, but I figured I'd, I'd mention that. Uh, I also went ahead and glued the backpack to uh, a piece of sprue here so that I could airbrush it separate and also work on the head separate. And I, my thought process is that'll allow me to, to get here to the cloak a lot easier with the airbrush. So, But on that note, we are going to be coming in with some primers here, and we're going to be using uh, three Steinol Res primers. So we're going to be using Steinol Res Black, we're going to be using their red brown as well as their white and the thought process is we can come in and we can put a zenithal highlight uh, transitioning from black to brown to white from the top so that when we come in with our red colors we get a nice transition on the model so let's go ahead and get some airbrush going so we'll go ahead and start with the backpack here and as always spray in the back of our hand and start laying down some colors With our black primer now dry, it's time to come in with that red brown from Minotaur as well. So with our brown paint loaded up, we're gonna be coming in and we're gonna be hitting the top spots of this uh, piece of armor, trying not to hit all the black. We wanna kinda hit from an angle down and hit where the light source would be, keeping in mind that we're gonna be coming in with uh, white paint as well uh, from the direct top. So we're gonna kinda play with the angles of this, leave some black, show and get some brown, and then have a nice bright white spot. So let's go ahead and begin. Now you can see we got that transition into brown. We got a lot of black and we want a little bit of white here at the top. So we're going to tilt it a little bit more and exaggerate this. So we've got more of a black from the bottom and more of a brown from the side at this point. Come over here and make sure we hit. Uh -huh. I think that looks good. So now it's time to come in and replicate those same effects on Mephiston. Again, we're holding at an angle. We to make sure we're leaving some of this black here in the recesses and planning for some white as well. All right, just like that. I think that's very reasonable. We've got a nice transition or gradient from black to brown. It gets bright at the top, but as you turn to the side, you can really see that transition that we've got. Now, uh, I have not primed his face yet. We are gonna go ahead and hit this with some brown as well. Do not hit this with black because he's going to be a lighter color uh, and we want to be able to apply our flesh colors and our hair colors a little bit more easily and those are going to apply over the, uh, the brown red color we have here uh, as well as the white a lot easier than the black. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come in and apply our final bit of priming or zenithal highlighting with our white. With our brown now dry, it's time to come in and apply some white highlights from the extreme top, the zenith here. Now, if I'm going to be using my Mr. Hobby Creos PS289 for this because it's got a smaller needle and I want to be a bit more precise. So when we come in here and we're applying the zenithal highlight from the top of the white, we really want to be focusing right here at the top and leave that brown and transitioning into the black. That's going to help us later uh, with our red transition or gradient. So we got that bright spot at the top and not any at the bottom, but I do want to hit a little bit right here on the top of the skull. I think this is going to give us a nice bright red when we apply the, the red colors into a nice gradient and then another little splash of brightness here where this protrudes into the darkness below, which I think is going to be really nice. So now it's time to come in and apply these same types of techniques to this model here, but specifically we're going to be trying to hit all the high points just like the other one and really trying to make sure we leave these dark recesses in so we get the nice transitions later. So let's go ahead and rotate the model here and start targeting these areas. See, so trying to leave some of those in there where we think the bright spots are going to be. All right, so I think I want to come in and hit the spot right here at his knee. I think that'll be a natural spot where the light's really gonna hit.
I'm going to brighten up right at the edge of his cloak there. I really want that to be brightened up. And I'm going to come in and hit the kind of tops of his foot right here. With our Zenithal highlights now applied, this guy is ready for some color. But before we transition into applying color to Mr. Mephiston here, we've got to get a highlight down on his face as well. So for that, we're just going to come in at an angle here, and we're going to spray white from the top and just get a nice gradient going across his hair and his face. And there we go, just like that, nothing fancy. We just got a light transition on his face from a red-brown into a white, which is going to facilitate applying some flesh colors later. So we're going to go and allow uh, Mr. Mephiston's face here, his cool little backpack, and Mephiston himself, the headless sorcerer as it is currently, we're going to allow him to dry, and then we'll come in and we'll lay down some color. Mephiston is now dry, and it's time to come in with a red paint and have him looking awesome. For that, we're going to be coming in with Angelic Blood first, and that's going to be the uh, primary source of red on this whole model. And then we'll be coming in over the white zenithal highlights with our Scorching Red. So let's go ahead and start laying down some colors. When we apply this initial coat, make sure my fist on here is out of the way, and we're going to be aiming on the undersides here, trying to leave some of that white showing through so that Scorching Red is very bright. And you can see as we're applying this red, the areas that it's hitting that are brown and black are applying a much darker shade of red. And where it hits the white, it's almost pink looking. But once we come across with that scorching red, it's going to bring it all together. And this is why the sub-assembly here was super useful, because we were able to keep this backpack separate and allow us to manipulate it and apply the red in a nice, smooth fashion. Get all the shadowed areas and everything. So I'm going to leave that the way it is so when we come in with the next color, we can hit that from the top and get a nice bright red. Mephiston here is going to be a little bit trickier because we're going to be kind of spraying the folds in the shadow areas, but we've got a lot going on. So let's see what we can do. This is such a lovely red color. This angelic blood from Minotaur is fantastic. It's so great for painting blood angels. Make sure we hit his foot and his leg down here, which are very dark because that's the underside. But that's okay. That's okay. And you know, so I'm doing a couple passes here just to make sure I've got this loaded up. I'm not missing any of the dark spots. All right, so currently we've got a little bit of white peeking through. And that is okay. We're going to load up our Scorching Red and we're going to come in and we're going to apply the final Zenithal kind of spray from the top with that color, get a nice crisp transition. So let's go ahead and load that up. To prepare our Scorching Red for the model here, we are going to be mixing it in a one-to-one -one ratio with Angelic Blood. I found this to be a little bit orange, so mixing it with this makes a nice bright red and that's what we're after. So we're going to come in here and we'll start by spraying on the top sides of our backpack here, specifically targeting the areas that are white and getting a little bit across the whole surface at an angle. And as you can see, we get this nice, super bright red. Looks great. Very Blood Angel-like. And I think it's going to look really good on my fist on as well. So let's go ahead and grab my fist on. And now we can start targeting all the bright areas that are left on him too. Top of his little armor piece here, his little, his, I don't know, his weird popped collar. You pop a collar some fist on the fist on, pop some collars. Bringing the collar pop back. And then right back here, as you can see when it's got that kind of white uh, showing through, it almost looks like pink or a little bit of a, a purple magenta kind of color. I guess magenta is maybe more pink, but uh, you guys can see what I'm talking about, I think. Quick little spritz across the top of them just to tie them all together and i think that is looking fantastic what a nice bright series of red that we've got on mephiston here with our red now applied there is something else i'd like to do while we're in the airbrush step here with mephiston and that is to mask him off and spray some black here on his cape as best we can to get a nice transition uh, before we move on to more traditional painting by hand but before we do that, we're going to allow him to dry and we're going to transition over and we are going to spray a little bit here on his face. 
So for that, we're going to be coming in with some Reaper paints, and we're going to start out with tan skin, and we're going to spray the bottom side here. Now, in the uh, box art for Mr. Mephiston here, he is a little bit on the pale side, uh, so I'm going to be trying to uh, capture that a little bit when I'm airbrushing him. So I am going to be using a little bit of Vallejo's Thinner and Flow Improver here, and we're going to squirt some of this onto the side of the cup. You can see the side of the cup here. And then we're going to come in with one of our little mixing brushes, get a little bit wet, and then we're going to swish that down there in the bottom. Kind of looking at the side of the cup here, see if we got the consistency uh, where we want it. So we're going to spray on the back of our hand here. Looks like we're getting some flow. And we're going to go ahead and spray his face. We're going to spray in a, uh, an upward angle from the bottom and try and leave that white showing through. Just like so. Now we're going to go ahead and switch out our paint here and come in with our fair skin from Reaper as well and hit him with a brighter flesh tone from the top. I went ahead and mixed this in the cup with the other paint because uh, getting a little bit of cross-contamination there is only going to help to blend the colors. So I'm going to spray on the back of our hand here make sure we're getting the different colors. So it's the darker skin, the lighter one coming through and then we're going to spray his face from the top. All right, so you can see we got that transition on his cheeks where it's dark up to the light spot on his forehead. And I think I'm gonna hit him with just a smidge more right on the front there. There we go. Like I said, in the box art, he is very pale. So we're gonna try and play off of those features. Now with our flesh laid down, as well as our red on the backpack and the fist on, it's time to let these dry. We can come in for the next step. With my fist on now dry, it's time to come in and mask him off because we want to spray this portion of his cloak or cape thingamajig. I guess that's a cape. It's kind of flowing up a cape. Uh, we want to mask him off so we can spray this black with a little bit of gray. And that brings us into the super secret tutorial tip of the day of the month, whatever you want to call it. If you guys have been following me long, uh, then you may not know this. If, you, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know what's about to happen. Boom, dropping an egg of knowledge on you. Little bit of silly putty. If you're not aware, this is great stuff for masking on models. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna kind of determine the areas that we wanna mask off, which is gonna be right in here for sure. We gotta be really careful because we don't want this to get messed up. So when we apply that silly putty and peel it off, you have to be really careful peeling it back off so you don't mess anything up. So let's come in here and lay this down on the model. There we go. One of the things I like to do is kind of get it settled where I want it. And then I'll come in with one of my sculpting tools, wherever they are, somewhere over here next to me. And I like to come in here and kind of press this down where we want it to be flush so we can get the best possible um, kind of transition on the model so we can get that extra bit of color and gradient from our airbrush. So I'm gonna keep this as close as we can we want to prevent that overspray from getting on the red that we worked so hard on earlier to, from getting messed up. We don't want that to get messed up. Press down in there. Do, 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 do. Pretty simple. Not rocket science. Just come in here, mask off the model, and be aware that if you, as long as you mask off the red, if you mess up any of the black where it's not quite masked off perfectly, you can come in and fix that later. The black's going to be a little bit easier to fix than the red will, so. Use your best judgment when you're applying your masking so that you mask off the right areas when you're working on your models. So we're gonna go ahead and mask off the backside here as well. Gonna need a little bit more than what I had down. Just gonna roll this in our hands, flatten her out. Nice piece. I want to kind of have this, mm, the flatter side will do. Kind of run along his cape. Run along that. Okay. Oh, let's go ahead and roll that up. This can come up under and connect with the front side here. And we had some of that other putty. And it looks like a little bit more of his robe exposed, so tidy that up. There we go. And his little foot down here is exposed, so we'll go ahead and hit that with a little bit of shaded putty. Boom! Don't want that to get messed up. And let's come in and tidy up the back here. 
Again, trying to block off all that red. This can be a little time consuming, but it's worth it in the end if you're using an airbrush because you're gonna get these nice transitions without having to do it by hand. And that's the, the whole thing. Sometimes you work a little harder to hobby a little smarter. <laughs> little hobby quote of the day. Sometimes you gotta work a little harder so you can hobby a little smarter. Doesn't always apply, but it is what it is today. So when you come up here, try and box off his, uh, his pauldron there. Again, do the best you can. If there's some areas that don't quite get masked um, and uh, you have to come in and hand paint them black because you couldn't, you couldn't mask off properly without those areas being sacrificed, that's fine. Hand paint to the black, doing a little bit of a gray edge highlight is not the end of the world. You can do that, but it's these areas right here where we really want to make sure that we're getting that nice black transition on, that gray. That's what we want. And right now, it's really funny when I've, I've done these on stream, people come in and they think I've done some weird green stuff monstrosity. I'm like, no, I'm not that crazy. He's not, he's not some weird Nurgle goop. It's Nurgle. It's Nurgle they usually think that I'm... I'm doing stuff with it's not Nurgle. It's not Nurgle. Papa Nurgle would not be happy with my employing of the silly putty. A sacred, sacred putty from the Nurgle forces. He would not be happy that I was employing it to great effect, might I, might, might I add here, to one of the loyalist, re, le, re, le, <laughs> loyalist regions, loyalist legions perhaps, would not be happy that that is what I'm using this most sacred of Nurgle type effects on. But, whoops, that's one thing you could do, accidentally knock them off. But I think Papa Nurgle will be happy enough that we're working on some 40K, right? He won't have to come in and exact his revenge just yet because we're doing hobby stuff. As long as you're doing hobby stuff, Papa Nurgle will be happy with you, as will the Emperor or Perhaps it's for the greater good, or whatever Tyranid's saying. That kind of sounded <laughs> a little bit like a, uh, a, what are those, Murlocs? Murlocs from uh, World of Warcraft. If you got any fellow nerds out there that played World of Warcraft, you know what I'm talking about. Those annoying little turds, those little Murlocs. They're like the Tyranids of freaking Warhammer. Or not Warhammer, uh, World of Warcraft. Ridiculous. Used to drive me bananas. Didn't much like questing and having to kill, well, I guess, I guess taking them out was a win. one way to silence those little guys, but um, I just hated listening to them. Those, those things were so annoying. Got on my nerves. i tell you. i tell you. I apologize for being a little bit random, folks. I have had some caffeine today. And some of you guys know me. Once I get caffeine flowing, the conversation gets going. Sometimes I'm quiet, but... I, was, I think that's kind of why um, Nomadic Chris had recommended I, uh, I try a different format here, is just to try something a little bit different and see how it goes. If uh, this is something you like, sound off in the comments below. If you don't like me rambling and you prefer something a little bit more formal, sound off below and let me know. We'll make adjustments going into uh, February and uh, adjust the way that I film videos and tutorials going then. Now, my, my battle reports will likely always be a little bit bantery in nature, um, not like bantery insulting, but I like I like joking with my opponents, having a good time, singing, saying goofy stuff, trying to trying to have a fun game. You know, you play playing within the con or within the parameters of the game and the mission to win, but making sure that it's goofy and you're having fun too. It is a game. You know, you can be serious but also have fun. So, but on that note, I think we've got all the gobbledygook on him. Papa Nagel would be quite proud. So now we have to come in and grab our black and gray paints so that we can spray his cloak. For that, we're going to be using base gray, a little bit of charred stone, and raven black, which looks a little weird right now, but a little hi -ya! a little shake, and it starts to look black once again. So let's go ahead and prep our airbrush, and we'll start laying down some color. All right, so we've got our raven black loaded up, and we're going to be trying to hit his cape here but making sure that as we come up next to the areas where the silly putty is that we aren't applying the paint too thick if you apply the paint too thick right next to the silly putty when you go to peel it up you may have some like cracked and ripped paint so it's better to do multiple thin coats and passes as you would with a paintbrush to get a nice thin transition and coat on the surface so as always we're going to spray in the back of our hand here 
You can see some of the previous paint we used still in the airbrush. That wouldn't have been good. So spray until we get black coming out. I think we've got a nice enough coat of black on the surface there. I think we can go ahead and let that dry and then come in with our gray paint. And I apologize for having the, uh, the compressor going crazy in here with me. Um, I totally forgot to stop speaking while it was going. But uh, there you go. You got to hear my setup. With our black now dry, it's time to come in and hit the high points, the ridges of his flowing magnificent cape here with our charred stone. So for that, we're going to be holding him at an angle here, trying to hit the upper portions and leave the black areas in the recesses. As usual, spray on the back of our hand here, make sure we got good flow, and then we can begin. Let's go ahead and start spraying. And I'm kind of focusing here on the edges and pulling back. I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit right here as well, just to get a little hint of that gray. There we go. And we're going to come around and hit the high points on this side as well. There we go. Very nice. And we're going to hit just a smidge right down here. We want it to be subtle because those are ridges that are not going to be hit with as much light as easily. There we go. I think that looks really nice. Now we're going to come in with a little bit of charred stone mixed one to one with brace gray. Just so we can hit these with a little bit more of a bright gray right there on the bright spots. All right, so with our lighter gray um, loaded up here, we're going to be trying to hit just the hot spots to get that nice transition here. Yep, I feel like our PSI is a little high, so let's turn that down just a smidge. Oh, that's better, that's better. I had that up around 20, I just knocked it down to around, um, probably around 12. Hit right here on the edge here, right where it's going to be the brightest. Okay, And then kind of hit just a little dab right there on the extreme tips of those bottom ones. And now it's super dark right here on the flowing portion, so let's hit just a little spritz going across that. A little bit of, a little bit of gray flowing across. Now, this is a little bit bright in some areas, so we're going to come back in with just a little bit of black and push the shadows just a smidge, and then I think this is going to be looking quite nice. For the black shadow we're going to uh, reapply here, we're going to be coming back in with a little bit of Vallejo model color, which the guys at Hobby Lobby decided to put the sticker on the label. Good job, Hobby Lobby! We're going to come in with uh, uh, their standard black here, thin down for an airbrush. I find it to be a little bit more matte and a little bit darker than that raven black from Minotaur. We're going to come in here, spring on the back of our hand, as usual, make sure that the paint's coming out right all right and I'm gonna throttle that PSI down just a little bit more a little bit more a little bit closer to the tin that's nice and we're gonna come in with this and hit areas and try and push the shadows back in as the cape flows in towards Mr. Mephiston Mr. Mephiston As you can see, because I've got this thinned down, it's very translucent. So you still retain a lot of that gray color we applied before. And because this right here whips up, I'm going to flip my fist on here. And we're going to try and hit the underside um, and make it kind of darker. Because there would be a shadow there where it whips up, right? Yeah. Hold this guy at an angle here and spray this direction so we hit the undersides uh, and kind of re-black those out where the gray kind of oversprayed more than what we wanted. There we go. Some of these we can't quite get very easily with the angles, so we'll come in and manually do them. Very nice. I think that really helps push the folds in his cloak. And I'll come over, flip this side over. It's going to be a lot easier uh, for some of this because the angles make it easier to spray the black. We're going to come up closer when the fist on, the cape meets the fist on, and really push that black right there. And I think let's get just a smidge more right there where the fold is.
There we go. I think that's looking really nice, really subtle. And that's looking like a really nice, cool, black looking cape. The only thing left for us to do now is to allow this to dry, and then we can come in and peel off that silly putty and see what kind of goodies we have underneath. All right, so our gray paint is now dry, and that means that we can ditch this glove. Ciao! Hands all sweaty, done with the airbrushing for today's session, but we can come in here and go ahead and peel off some of this silly putty. For that, I take the extra silly putty I had left, and I use it, and I press down on what was on the model and peel up. Now, as you're doing this, be very, very careful. Uh, on the Depending on the model you're working on, you may have areas that are quite fragile and prone to break off. So in this guy's particular case, oh, Papa Nurgle would be proud. Stringy, you weird stuff. Uh, his sword here is particularly fragile, and he's also got these little areas that are kind of hanging down here on the front of his robes, uh, little syringes and whatnot that are prone to snapping. So as you're doing this in your models, be aware there may be spots that are likely to get broken and try and do your best to peel this off gently and slowly and don't mess anything up. And right in here is where I was worried, but it looks like we've peeled that off quite safely, quite securely. And there we go. As we've revealed that, we'll just pull these on down around the model. And look at that. Boom. We got that red cape on the front, red armor, black cape. Look at that. And as you rotate it, you can really see you get that little hint of gray, which I really like. Now, before we wrap up part one of our tutorial today, the last thing that I would like to do on this particular model before we wrap up with our session is to apply some washes. Now, um, in the photo, the armor is a little bit of a brighter red, and this is a bit more of a darker kind of uh, tinted red. Let's see what we can call that. Um, this is more on the orange side, and this is a little bit more on the pure red side. Now, uh, the way I paint Dark Angels, or not Dark Angels, woo, woo, that was blasphemous. The way I play, uh, paint um, Blood Angels is their armor is a little bit uh, darker than uh, what's in the photo here. So one of the models I have here for reference, this little fellow, so it's very similar. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is applying an Agrax Earthshade watch, watch, wash rather, uh, to the armor portions, and probably a Kerberg Crimson, um, uh, mixed wash onto the robes just to have a tinted different red here and a different red there kind of like in the photo Except that one's more on the orange side. This one's gonna be on the more dark red This is gonna be on the more uh, kind of saturated red uh, So we'll go ahead and get that going and for that one of my super secret sauces. I use little um, Water bottle lids to mix my washes in and I also use um, Liquitex matte varnish to thin my washes this right here. It's very sim similar to Lamian Medium, but not exactly. So we're going to go ahead and grab our Agrax Earthshade here. Give that a good shake. And we're going to grab, let's see, what do we want to do here? Uh, let's try, I'm going to be subtle, so let's do a, uh, let's do a two to one. So we're going to do, um, hmm, what's a good number here? Let's do eight drops of this which will give us uh, eight drops of wash to four parts something else. So one, two, three, four. That's looking like a lot of wash already. That's a lot of wash. Um, so we're doing two to one. Hmm. Mm, I'm not sure if I like that. I'm not sure. Give me a second to think. All right, so I've taken a moment to think. I think we've got, uh, what was it? Oh, I don't remember how many drops that was. Oh man, this is who you guys are hanging out with. Let's dump that out. And we'll start over. I think we're gonna go ahead and do a one-to-one -one ratio. I think that's gonna be better. So one, two, three, four. I think four is looking pretty good. We don't actually you know what? Let's do a fifth drop just for good measure. So I think we're gonna have uh, a nice surface area we wanna tackle here. So now we're gonna come in and we're gonna put, uh, we have five drops wash in here roughly. We're gonna put four drops of this and one drop flow improver. One, two, three, four. Boom, it's not rocket science. You just kind of get a, get a mix you like and then go with it. So here we go, one drop flow improver. Boom. We'll give this a mix. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. I think what I was thinking before was like two parts wash, two, uh, two parts uh, varnish rather to one part wash. I think that's what I was thinking, but I think this will be fine. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna hit his armor with that. There we go. Come in here and hit his bottom leg, which you can barely see, but we want to have a similar finish on the whole model, so we're going to hit the whole thing. Okay. 
trying not to hit his uh, his kind of robes down there because we're gonna hit those with a different wash. And you can see a little spot where we didn't quite get the the black down very well right here next to his little his little uh, I guess nipple armor there. <laughs> we'll come in with a little bit of black and we'll touch that up later. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. All right. Okay. As you can see, I'm kind of manipulating the the wash here. Moving it around until I'm happy with the way that it's pooling. It's better to try and do this now than to let it dry and then be having a sad face when you realize that the wash is pulled in an area you don't like and you can't fix it. This is also one of the reasons why I thin down my washes because you can always come in and add more wash you can't come back in and take wash off if it's already dry so I like to go a little bit more subtle and then build up if I need to apply multiple layers and see if I like what I got now we're likely to come in and redo parts of the skull anyway we're gonna go and wash it while we're here just in case I want to leave parts of uh, the surrounding armor there red hit that hit this right here and that's really going to be covered, but we want to make sure we're consistent. Okay. There we go. And right on the underside. We can hit his glove. It's fine. We're going to be repainting that anyway, but just so we've got a little bit of his elbow pad that's showing. We're going to go allow that to dry, and while that's drying, we'll come in, and we're going to also hit his backpack. You guys probably think I for or thought I might have forgot about it. I did not. Wheels from the garrison... Did not forget about your Mephiston's backpack, I promise. Clearly, it's being washed as we speak. All right, so I hope as you guys are listening to this that uh, you're getting a hobby on. Hopefully, uh, you're having a good time. Hopefully, you've, you're having a great January, assuming this uh, it airs in January. I hope so. Hoping that I got this out. If I didn't, then beautiful, beautiful February. Hopefully, it's great, great February if it's February. I don't know. We shall see. Uh, but hopefully I got this out uh, on time before the end of the month, at least started the first uh, couple of parts, if possible. Hopefully it's what happened, but I hope you guys have started out a wonderful new year. Hope you had a great holiday, and hope you're getting some awesome hobby activities on. I've got a lot of plans for this year for things I want to tackle, and I can't... I couldn't be doing, I couldn't be on the path that I'm on if it wasn't for the support of you guys. So if you enjoy this content and you would like to help support it, I encourage you, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, like this video, smash that uh, little bell so you get alerts when I put up new content, and uh, most importantly, sound off in the comments below if there's anything you think I could do to get better, or things you'd like to see, or if you just want to chat with me. That would be awesome. If you'd like to go beyond that, I encourage you to check out Patreon. This particular video here is fun to buy wheels. Oh, wheels from uh, the garrison. Um, that'll be Chris Oaks from the Facebook group. Uh, those are one of the same. Uh, he is wheels on Twitch, and he is uh, Chris Oaks on Facebook. And uh, he's one of the guys that is one of my supreme supporters. And he is allowing me, uh, or his, his support on Patreon is allowing me to put out uh, these types of videos each month. And hopefully this month, you guys, if you haven't seen it already, there should be a battle port that has gone out or will be going out where I play with Bob again. And that video has been brought to you guys by. Um, uh, clan wolf from twitch that'd be a david from our facebook group um right now his last name is eluding me i feel like he uses a weird last name but it is clan wolf we'll go with clan wolf uh, but he's allowing me to do battle reports so uh it is because of you guys' contribution that i'm able to do what i do so now that we've got this uh wash currently drying it's time to come in and target these robes so for that we're going to come in with some wherever it's at Somewhere on my desk. Kerberg Crimson! Which is red. And I want to see... Let's, let's do a quick test here. You guys can always do this, especially when you airbrush. Uh, take a little bit and put it on something that it doesn't matter. Had a little piece of uh, plastic fuzz fly by. And see how you like what it looks like on the surface. I'm testing here next to his foot to see if I like that. And I think I do. I might just go ahead and apply this right out of the pot across his robes. So wish me luck. Here we go. All right, that is looking, it's actually looking really nice. I like that uh, shade that it's giving to the robes. See, and initially I was going to thin this down. I was going to mix it with a little bit of Agrax, but I got into the Muse. I got my flow. I got had a feeling, and I thought this might look really nice if we just went ahead 
and applied it straight out of the pot. It's not something, something I normally do, but I think that looks really, really good. I'm really excited to uh, at some point pick up the contrast paints because I'd like to be able to play around with using those uh, like inks and you can really uh, start to enhance some of your colors with that and I think that'll be a lot of fun. And right there you can see I hit the top of his foot so we're going to come in and just smudge that away and that's fine. On oh, the folds in his armor take the wash like a champ. My goodness. What a gorgeous miniature. I'm not even a Blood Angel uh, player but I do like some of the minis and man this guy is... No exception to the cool factor. And the intent here, and I, I also thought about maybe mixing a little bit of purple in with that, but I think this is fine based on the photo. We've got that darker red up here, a different kind of shade of red down here. We'll come in and we'll edge highlight those in the next uh, part, the part two for this video, and see how they look. I'll probably do a little bit of black lining as well, uh, particularly on this foot, just to enhance that. Maybe down here in the folds here, just put a little quick black line, make that look. Nice, and we'll come in and we'll hit his, uh, his gloves and so forth as well. But, if you thought we were done here, you'd be wrong. Uh, while this is currently drying, we're going to go ahead and prep a color for the cape here as well. Now, this one I do want to be subtle, but we're going to come in with a little bit of Drakenoff Nightshade mixed with known oil, because we want this to be tinted a little hint, little hint of blue. Don't want a lot, just a little. Go ahead and mix this. So let's do... Uh, Let's do like two parts wash to one part um, no known oil. So we'll do one, two, three, four. So we'll need two drops of known oil. And if you guys haven't experimented with thinning washes and stuff, you should play around with it. Have some fun. See what you get out of it. One, two. Okay, excess back in there. So we got six parts wash in here, and I want this to be subtle. So let's go ahead and do. Let's do three. Normally I do one to one. That would be 12 drops in there. Let's do let's do a two to one mix. So let's let's do the 12. So that's 11. I'm gonna put one drop flow improver just for good measure. There we go. Go ahead and mix that up. That should be particularly subtle. It's going to look a little milky now. And that's because of that varnish in there. When it dries, it will be translucent. It just looks a little milky because it's uh, it's got a kind of color to it until it dries. Just got to get used to that. Uh, alternatively, you could thin with your um, uh, your Lamine Medium, uh, which is not quite uh, the exact color, and it's going to be more translucent, but you should get a similar effect if you mix with that because it's basically just a, a matte medium of sorts. So we're going to come in here try your best not to touch the red if you do immediately clean that brush out you do not want to mix red onto your robes here i'm going to come in here on his cape rather start applying this wash it's going to kind of give us a a, a cool uh feeling not like cool like cool but like cool as in cold a little bit of a hint of blue which is what i wanted and you have the the hue or the, the, the warmth of a, a particular color, and you can have reds and stuff, browns and things make you feel like kind of warm um, or a light vibe from it. This one I want kind of a cold color, cold, cool, blue. blue. And I'm trying to make sure this is smooth, I don't want bubbles. Because I'm using this large brush, sometimes it leaves little, little bubbles in there. Your brush may not do that, and that's good. But I'm trying to get used to this little poo-poo brush that I'm applying my wash with. Trying to move quickly because I don't want it to dry in any weird areas. I want it to be a nice thin coat. So think of this as kind of like you're washing, but also sort of glazing because you're you're tinting the the uh, the cape here. And there we go. All we gotta do is let that dry. I think we have a very very subtle hint of blue on the surface. With the washes on Mephiston now dry, there's only one thing left to do in part one of our How to Paint Mephiston video series. And for that, we're going to be washing his face here. I'll walk you guys through what I might do on that here in just a moment. As we go into part two, we're going to be working on edge highlighting his uh, cape here, his robes, and his armor. And it looks like the wash kind of dulled down uh, a lot of the colors we had. And I struggle with this. And this is something you guys that have been following me for a while know that I struggle with this contrast. Uh, and I had a lot of these nice colors with the airbrush and I've really pulled them back down and subdued them because I work a lot with subtlety. I did some quick tests here on the back on ideas for what I might want to do on the robes and I really like this right here. This I'll probably bring back down a little bit with a wash. Um, these highlights look really nice and I'm going to try and bring the high points on the bottom portions of his robe here up 
and then push the shadows down a little bit and that'll be part of the edge highlighting process we work on in the next video and then we're going to hit the areas on his armor here and his backpack with some really nice edge highlights that'll be bright and make him pop i really think that backpack turned out well i will be coming in with some gray edge highlights on his cape here as well i don't think this one suffered so much from the desaturation of the wash as much as this did i probably i probably should have um not second guessed myself and went with this straight out of the pot i probably should have thinned it down to make it more subtle and i think we might have had a bit more uh transition or, or, or uh, color depth in the gradients here um, but you live and you learn as i'm showing you guys my process i'm hopefully teaching you something and you're hanging out with me I will also learn and hopefully become a better artist through this experience than I was when I first started. So, but on that note, let's go ahead and transition over and we'll start working on his face. Now, some of you guys who follow me know how I do washes. Some of you who don't follow me don't. So one of the things I like to do is to uh, wash flesh tones with Druji Violet. So for this guy, we're gonna be coming in. Uh, we don't need a lot of wash. We're gonna take one part Druji Violet and one part Kerberg Crimson and whoop, let's go ahead and get that to drop cool and then i think we're going to go ahead and go with a um hmm, i usually do a three to one or two to one let's do a three to one ratio here so there's two drops washing here so we're going to put six drops of matte medium or matte varnish rather one two four five six we'll see how that's looking after i mix it and if it's uh, too subtle i'll add a little bit more wash in there to bring it up all right think that is reasonable so now we're going to come in and we're going to apply this as a thin coat to his face now you can play with this you can add more Kerber crimson more violet do uh, one of them over the other instead of mixing or you can add in some agrax or shade you can really get some interesting skin tones with your washes here let's go ahead and apply that and I wanted to go with um, a little bit more of a pale effect on the fist in here because in his box art like I said at the beginning of the video it's a bit more on the pale side. So. And by applying this with an airbrush, we're able to get these nice quick transitions with this flesh. I'm gonna come in here with this wash, allow that to dry. We'll have an interesting kind of more pale skinned uh, Space Marine compared to some of the stuff I've done recently, but there you go. And we'll come in and we'll probably come in with a little bit of uh, the fair skin uh, or maybe a little bit of fair highlight and hit like his eyebrows, his nose, uh, things of that nature. And then come in and hit his hair uh, with some yellow and a wash and start to build up his blonde hair. But let's go ahead and let that dry and see what we've got and then we'll uh, wrap up today's video. And just like that, we've got a zoomed in shot here with the wash now dry. Now it actually looks like a pretty, uh, just slightly fairer skin uh, Space Marine that's not too bad uh, compared to my skin tone. He's a little bit lighter, but not, not actually terribly that bad. Um, I think once it dries, you can really see where it's not just straight up purples or pinks, anything like that. It's a nice, interesting transition. It looks really natural, I think. Um, if I hadn't used the colors that I did, I might have... Um, uh, use the tan skin and, and brought up the colors a little bit lighter, but not into straight fair skin. I might have used, uh, what have we got over here? Um, I might have used fair shadow. Whoops, I just dropped that. Uh, for the base here, uh, I believe I started with a tan, now that I'm all confused. I've got all these flesh paints on my desk and I don't even remember which one I started with. You guys in the video saw it, um, but I think I started with tanned skin. So I might have started with um, maybe a tanned shadow. Is that what this is? Yeah, I might have started with a tanned shadow and then built up into the, uh, what was this, tanned skin here. And then maybe a fair shadow that looks like a, a, a nice set of skin tones. Uh, or maybe even started with the tanned skin and built up into the fair shadow and then maybe into a little bit of a tanned uh, or excuse me, uh, rather built into a tanned highlight and then maybe into a, a fair shadow. It just depends. Um, you can get a lot of different uh, flesh shades uh, and find what works for you. And I like to do a little bit different every time I paint a marine. So uh, their flesh tones are, are very different, almost very different. They're subtly different every time I work on one, which uh, I think is more natural. Every time you work on a space marine or, or Warhammer model or anything, uh, it makes sense that their flesh tones a little bit different from uh, model to model because in the real world, people are different. Um, now, my intent was for this to be uh, more on the pale side, and I think that's turned out reasonable. I think once we get the, the hair on it, it's going to look um, uh, even better. Uh, but it is still not as pale as the reference photo. Uh, he is ultra pale in the reference photo, but I think this particular face is going to look really nice on this model. I think that's going to look really good. He'll be hanging out right in there. If I can actually hold that in position, I think he'll be 
I think he'll look pale enough against the dark reds and look pretty cool. So, but on that note, uh, I think that's going to conclude part one of our How to Paint Mephiston tutorial. Hopefully this uh, new format is, woo, dropping stuff. Hopefully this new format is interesting to you guys to some degree. If you have any thoughts on things I could uh, improve upon or things you'd like to see, feel free to sound off in the comments below. Uh, but uh, as we bid farewell to the final look at the model here, we're going to whip my chair around here and uh, do our shout outs and end today's video. All right, guys, that was an interesting experience for me today. I've been uh, working on trying to do this uh, tutorial in a more informal fashion. Uh, I'm not super jazzed with... Uh what I did here with the, the transitions, uh, I wish I had uh, taken a step back and not went so uh, heavy handed with the wash. You live and you learn. I think when we come in for the edge highlights, I'll be able to build it up with some glazes and we'll get a, a nice bright edge on it. Uh, I think that will help um, break it up a little bit. Uh, in the end, I think the model is going to look cool. I uh, just did not quite achieve what I set out to achieve. Uh, I think I got a little, uh, little flustered and out of my mind here, out of my, my normal uh, uh, painting mind uh, or mindset, I should say. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Um, you know, but doing these videos, I get a little nervous. I shouldn't. I've done plenty of tutorials for Brush for Hire before. Um, but trying a new format, um, trying to paint these after work. I've worked all day. I came home. It's almost 1 a.m. as I'm finishing up this video here. Um, so I'm trying to film these after work. I'm tired. Lots of excuses. That's all you hear is excuses. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the model is going to look pretty cool. I think. I hope so. Um, ultimately what is going to matter is that it's finished at some point I've showed you guys uh, what I did hopefully you learned something uh, as we continue through this series and then ultimately what uh, makes the, the the biggest thing is that if the guy this is for wheels is happy then that is what counts uh, as I've said several times during today's uh, tutorial uh, if there's uh, anything I can approve upon, please feel free to sound off in the comments below. If there's anything you liked, didn't like, you'd like to see me work on in the future, I would love to engage with you. If you'd like to help support the channel, please uh, feel free to check out deathrodesigns.com. Uh, using coupon code GETAMPED10 will save you 10% and anything you do over there helps support me so I can continue to produce content for you guys, which I love to do. Uh, currently, we're only putting out a, a handful of videos a month right now. I'd like to uh, um, ramp that up as we progress through the year. We'll see how it goes, but uh, um, I spend a lot of my time on the, the content creation side, so to speak, engaging with the community on Twitch. So if you're not following me at Twitch or over on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash amp services and you, can guys, you guys can catch me live three to four days a week. As we progress with this content creation thing, this mission that I'm on, I'm hoping to be able to start doing some live streamed games uh, from the place that I live once I'm able to get into a place that can facilitate filming from, uh, from home, which would be cool. Uh, if you'd like to be an awesome supporter, I encourage you guys to check out Patreon. If you, uh, you want to help support what I do, you want to see more videos and, and help me to grow, that'd be one, one other uh, additional way that you could do that. Uh, but at the end of the day, simply by liking this video, commenting, subscribing to the channel, doing all those awesome things, um, you're helping to support what I do as well. I, I can't, I, I guess I could make content and put it out there for no one to watch, but uh, for these things to grow, uh, you, you know, it, it it kind of falls on you guys to, to hang out and watch. So um, whether you are supporting me by wa just watching the videos or otherwise, you're still supporting me and I really do appreciate that. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters, everyone who hangs out during my Twitch streams and all you guys that are uh, early Twitch subscribers. Uh, I cannot tell you or cannot express enough how uh, grateful I am for all of your support. And uh, I'm really excited to grow and uh, get better at painting. I'm really excited to progress and get better at filming and also get into doing some more game stuff. And at the end of the day, whether I'm the best printer in the world or I'm just progressing and I'm, 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 my mission is to spread happiness and positivity to you guys, hopefully that is coming through. I will learn and become a better artist and whether I get super good or not, as long as you're enjoying this and I'm motivating you, encouraging you to paint, giving you a good pleasant experience and uh, hopefully acting like a goofball so you have some entertainment, then uh, mission accomplished, I think. Uh, but on that note, I think we're going to conclude part one of the Paint Mephiston tutorial series. Again, hopefully you enjoyed this. Sound off in the comments below. As always, keep painting your models, keep rolling those dice, and I'll catch you guys in part two sometime whenever that comes out. Mm -hmm.